Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. See it right below us there? Uh, we were just talking about editing, but I don't care about editing. Do you? No. 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 If no. you don't have to edit, don't edit. No. If you can do it in one take. You do it, right? That's exactly right. I just read, uh, yeah. I, I was listening to, I saw the HBO documentary on Donna Summer. Mm-hmm. And I've always I've always liked the uh, song I Feel Love by her and Georgia Moroder and one of the other producers. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and uh, a groundbreaking song for, for, for the disco era and for, and for all the synth era after it. What was the name of the song again? I Feel Love. Huh. And I just read that she did sang it in one take. You know, they had to put all the keyboards and synths together, and she sang it in one take, which is which is amazing because the, the singing is fantastic. She did it all in one take. One take, right? Well, you know, that's the best what way we're to doing do it here, huh? Which is what we're doing here. What we're doing here. If you can do it in one take, that's right. It's better than going through like twenty takes, and then by the time you get to the last take, the take you accept is the one you didn't the first time out that happens many times well you know what they do now they splice different takes together yeah. not splice actually physical splice you like mean we, we can't believe that these wonderful performers today can do everything in one take and that's exactly how they sounded i'd be very surprised if anybody did it that way <laughs> very surprised you know i mean when i was a boy you know, they did it. You know, these guys who did rock and roll, early rock and roll, mm-hmm. would have a little studio somewhere. And they have a beam and they throw the microphone over the beam and everybody would stand in front of it, do the song. And that was the take. That's it. Yeah. You know, maybe something would happen in the middle of the take that it was completely unusable. They do it again. Yeah. And it was just as good. But no, they didn't have the flub in the middle. But the fact is, these guys were real performers. Mm-hmm. You know, today you don't have real performers. But you don't have to. Excuse me, I have a hair in my nose here. So easy. You better edit that out. Pretty good. I feel like I'm in tennis. Okay, let's start all over again. So how are you today? I'm <laughs> well. I'm okay, you know. I'm, you know, you're not convincing. You're not very convincing. Well, I, you know me. I, how, when did you ever know me when I was okay? Not really. No. I was always complaining about my health, right? Either that or if your health is good. I, I'm a little bit sluggish today. I'm a little bit tired today. I'm always I don't tired. have any energy today. It's, it's always something. I would come in and I would say, I don't have very much energy today. I'm right. really out of it. I'm every dead. day, every single day without and, failing. And then I would say, go on the air and what would happen? And you do okay. I'd have my energy. I'd have fine yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think it was a fear of mine. I think I, I always had this fear that I wouldn't be awake enough to do a show. Because all mm-hmm. the show, you know, I'm an, I was always a nighttime guy. And then I started doing morning shows. And that was so out of character for me. You know, I started out doing overnight shows, which I loved. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was wonderful. For two reasons. Number one, you had about four hours to kind of just laze about, and people would drop by, and you'd interview them, and so on. And it was a, you know, it was a good solid show. Uh, and the other reason was everybody at the radio station forgot you existed. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they would t- they would leave you alone. Yeah, they would leave you alone. So I could do anything I wanted to do, and unless it got them in trouble and they heard about it, I just did whatever I wanted. And another bonus of being on at that time, yeah, is that if if you get phone calls, the people are really out there. 
they 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 have some some an opinion that's really different or a perspective that's really different because a lot of them are living a, a, di- a whole different kind of life than the regular nine to five people. The nighttime people are a different breed of audience. Oh, yeah. Absolutely oh, yeah. different breed. And I loved it. I just mm-hmm. loved it. I mean, when I was at WPLJ, I was on from two o'clock in the morning until six. Wow. Now, I know people find that ridiculous. Who who They don't even have radio at that time of the morning live anymore, do they? I doubt it. You I know, doubt it. Uh, but I mean, then, but they don't have audiences that are big enough now to to accommodate a live well, announcer. Then your overnight audience was a very big audience. Yes, in New York, in certainly New York. it was huge. In New York, the overnight audience was as large as the morning show audience in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, there were you know tons of people. So I mean, you really gained quite an audience, and and yeah. you were playing to their half awake mentality because you were half awake but i really came awake doing that show at night i loved that show that was my favorite but then i had to do mornings because if you're going to make any real money in this business right you had to do the morning show so i started doing the morning shows and that's when i went to san francisco and it was i mean for, to, for me to get up at that time of the morning and go in and do a show i mean i was great at it but I hated every minute of it. I understand. I did the same thing. I produced many morning shows. And we, did a, a mo- we did a morning show essentially at Sirius XM, but not that early. Not very early, no. Well, when did we go on? Nine? I think no, seven. Seven. And we went yeah. till ten. That was it. See, I, remember, I forget now. Usually they'd go on at six, six to ten. But some of them, I worked five to ten. Why in the world... Did we have to do 7 to 10? Why didn't we do 6 to 10? I think it was because uh, it was an easy way to get the, because it was, you know, it was a national audience. Yeah. Whereas when you were in New York or San Francisco, you'd always do 6 to 10 or 6 to 9 because you wanted the earlier. But I went on at 7. Or work people. Which meant out in California, that was 4 o'clock in the morning. Which was too early, but it still had to be, you, you, you still had to be on live. See, what would have made sense if we did the show from 7 to 10, and then at 10 o'clock they simply re-ran the show, and then the audience would be 7 to 10 out in California. But then you don't have a live audience on the West Coast. That's what they want. Hmm. So. Well, anyway, so, but I mean, I, uh, I I never liked the mornings. I mean, I made a success of myself in San Francisco doing mornings, but I can't say I liked mornings as much as I liked overnights. Because that's it, interesting. In, in spite of the fact that there, there, there was more opportunity in the morning. Well, I mean, you did it because the money was much better. More opportunity for money, more opportunity for guests on the show, uh, more opportunity for phone callers. Yeah, there were, I mean, uh, uh, overall, it was. I mean, because the guests you would get. Well, now I don't know. Morning show guests, no. In San Francisco, I had a real problem. Okay. Because we had a station called KGO, and KGO mm-hmm. was the dominant number one station, had been that way for 20, 25 years. And so if anybody came to town, they wanted to do K- uh, KGO, but they kind of want to do my show too. But KGO said, we have to be the first station you do. And so what? And so I went on at six in the morning, and they did nothing but news until 10, oh. right? So the first show they could be on was the 10 o'clock show. So certain mm-hmm. people, I just couldn't get because KGO said, well, if you go on Alex Bennett's program, you can't do ours. Well, were they, did they have higher ratings? What, KGO? Yeah. Dominant. Oh, okay. Dominant. Well, then they get to choose. They get to choose. So yeah. I, you know, I started using comics a lot in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And that was something they didn't want. So I built my whole economy on having comics on the show. Because if I wanted the big movie stars that came into town, I'd have to see if they wanted to stay overnight in, in San Francisco so I could get them. What was KGO? Was that a news talk? News talk. Uh, no, no. It was it was news in the morning and then talk the rest of the day. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, and, and it's funny. You know, remember a few years ago they changed the rating system? You remember how it used to be that they had people writing a book and so on yeah. and so forth. And then they went to the 
what do they call it, those machines, the um, people meters. People meter, right. And when the people meter came in, all of a sudden KGO's ratings went into the toilet. Because they were more realistic. They were more realistic, and they had been programming their entire station to play to the person writing in the diaries. Exactly, exactly. And when they didn't have that any longer, everybody saw suddenly that nobody was listening to KGO. You know, but up until that time, I had to fight that for all the time that I was on in San Francisco. I did it effectively, but you know, you know. So, uh, if, if they stayed overnight, I was lucky. But and San Francisco is a nice town, so a lot of times they didn't mind staying overnight. Either that, or they told KGO to go screw themselves. What, what's wrong? Can you hear me? I, uh, all of a sudden, I can't hear you. I've had an audio problem. Oh, there you go. There yeah, you go. I'm back. Yeah. Uh -huh. My mixer just went out. So It just went out? All the lights went off, and then it came back on. Really? Well. Welcome to technology. Let me ask you, you know, I was thinking about this. Um, speaking of old radio, new radio, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and you're being tired all the time, which is a... Um, maybe symptomatic of getting older because I feel tired more often than that. Oh. But I was thinking try, about... Try, my, try 83, okay? Yes, I know, I know. And that's that's the key to my question is that you are 83. I was thinking about my father and I was thinking about, you know, the technology that mm -hmm. we have now. Mm -hmm. And I said to my wife yesterday, I said, it, he, he would have loved the wait, cell phone. Wait, 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 let, me get, let, me, it. let me get this straight. You talk to your wife? Yeah, sure. Oh, absolutely. okay. I, I just... I. I try not to. So don't know, you know that. I, don't know yeah. that that it's uh, received, that it's listened to. But but I do try. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I said uh, I said my father would have loved this thing. Although he probably he he was very paranoid. He 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 died just as the computers were getting uh, uh, popular, mm -hmm. just as email was starting to get popular. But he would not get an account he would not go online because he was paranoid that people were watching him i don't know what, what he was scared about but you know he was paranoid that they could get in they could hack before the word hack was a thing he was worried about hackers um but he but he loved the technology and i think he would have really appreciated the fact that we could do this kind of thing and and it made me wonder when i was thinking about speaking with you today what is it that you think is the most amazing thing in your lifetime what what it, what do you take away in your lifetime as being the thing that you say wow that's 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 really remarkable to me mm -hmm. well that probably i would have to say the fact that i could get laid okay let's go to number two <laughs> let's go to the number two on the on the list <laughs> because that i think that's amazing to everybody not just you. Yeah, so yeah, that, everybody's no, amazed. Let's put that and out. And don't let's, think about it, folks, because that'll make you want to vomit. But anyway, go ahead. So yeah, what, what? So so what is what is it in your eighty three years that that really is remarkable to you? It, it, that amazes you, and it can be anything. It's just not. It's just not technology. It could be anything. What is what is the takeaway you have in those? Well, when I was a kid, I dreamt of living in the future, see where it all goes, where this all goes, and and I got to tell you, the idea of computers and uh, uh, the internet and so on, it, it didn't it wasn't even on the horizon. Nobody even can you know considered it because nobody conceived of it. Well, there were there were there were the big computers with the vacuum. Well, you know, I mean, what, what we thought would be a great thing would be the video phone here it is well yeah but it's not a video phone you know. pretty much but we have the video phone well i mean we, we can see video on our phone but i don't this is, i don't have a phone right here and here we are talking with each other no but you can facetime you can yeah. facetime and, and g chat or whatever they call it that's the video phone that it's not sitting on your desk at home like we thought it would be but, yes it's but it's it's not it in exists. the it's not in the form we thought it would be in that's the thing yeah, yeah. well most things aren't when you think about them in the future they're not exactly the way you thought they i mean would the be. idea is you know it used to be okay uh and i was thinking about this the other day because for some reason i was looking at old stuff and so on but when you wanted to call somebody, 
uh, there was a charge for that if it was long distance. Yes, there was. Substantial charge. Is there any such thing as a long distance charge anymore? Uh, in fact, there is for people that have no idea that things like WhatsApp are available and all kinds of apps that no, get but you. I mean, if you just get an iPhone, if you just get an iPhone, you can call anywhere yeah. in the country and there's not an extra charge for that. In the well, old days, if you if you get WhatsApp, you can call anywhere in the world. In the and old days, they would say it was like twenty cents a minute or a dollar a minute or whatever the price was, and uh, that would get charged to your phone bill. Now you can call. I can call California. Forget about this. Okay, mm -hmm. absent this, I pick up my phone and I can call uh, 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 California if, and talk for three hours and never get charged for it. You know, um, is that an advancement that I that I would put in that list? Maybe you know, but I don't know what what uh, you know. Uh, it's funny because we do have all these wonderful tools available to us. You know, incredible tools. Yeah, and and it's never been this uh, incredible in our lifetime, uh, and. Um, Yet, with all these tools, life is not better. You know, I mean, well, that's because, because that's that's kind of the thing that I w that I was getting at, and not just as I said, I, I I didn't want to hear just about technology, but but anything that you thought was a, a remar something that was remarkable to you, good or bad, it doesn't well, you, matter. As I've gotten older, things have gone backward. I mean, okay, so we've got the internet, and we've got. Uh, you know, calls you can make and so on. But what is the downside of that? The downside is robocalls, for instance. That's uh, one any, of the downsides. Any, anything we invent, we initially invent for the good that they have, and eventually we wind up using them for the bad. That's what we are. That's what humans are. That's what we do. I don't know if we've always done that, you know. I mean... Well, I've, been, I've been here for 60 years, and, and it is remarkable to me that even in the short span of very short span of 60 years that people really have not changed at all in spite of the fact that technology has made changes by leaps and bounds yeah. we still have a, a, a divisive disgusting racism in this world a divisive disgusting um, I think um, it's, I think it's gotten worse because of the technology because, it may it may have gotten worse. Well, that mean, to, that to me is remarkable that we haven't progressed socially uh, in accepting each other. In in the, may, maybe maybe it takes hundreds or thousands of years to do that. But I thought when I was a kid and 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 you know racism and people uh, being against each other because of their religion and because of their uh, social status, I thought that would change. But it has not at all. Well, the trouble the trouble with racism today as opposed to racism when I was growing up. When, when Racism when I was growing up was there was a certain part of town that was the black side of town, and then there was my side of town, the white side of town. And I was a bad kid. I used to go over to the black side of town and hang out with my black friends, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the point was, is that a black person in those days knew their place. Now, don't take that in a negative way. You know, I'm, I'm saying I'm that sure. because they did know that they had certain restrictions on where they could go, what they could do, and so on, and they adapted to that. So they created their own culture as a, as a result of that. And um, it, then we got to the point where things were changing. Yeah, but at, the, at that time in San Francisco, you grew up in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and at that time in San Francisco, you, you also had very, very divided neighborhoods for Italians and for... Yes, you had that too. Yeah, for, I, for I, other, I grew up in an all-Italian neighborhood, a Jew in an all-Italian neighborhood. So, but, what, but weren't those segregated as well? Uh, yes. Uh, they didn't like the Jewish kid. You know, I used to be called all kinds of names, Jew boy, and so on and so forth. But, you know, what I'm saying is when I talk about you knew your place, you knew the restrictions that you had. Then all of a sudden we got into a period where you, you didn't have restrictions, but you didn't know what you had and what you didn't have. And that and was what, a, what time was that? I tell you, we're talking 60s. Okay. You know, 
uh, in which blacks were beginning to emerge, at least in the, in the society, but they didn't know how far they could go, you know, and then there were people trying to stop them. Uh, and, and now it's, you know, I mean, uh, do blacks have it bad in this country right now? I think more, less than they claim and more than we'd like to claim, you know? Well, um, well, what about other groups? What about uh, uh, different oh, nationalities? I think, I think, what about different I, sexual yeah, preference? Uh, different. Well, well, well I, I, what bothers me and has always continued to bother me is I have to put on my glasses because I can't even see the screen anymore. Okay. Um, uh, uh, what was the question again? Uh, putting aside the racist aspect, mm -hmm. what about... It, what changes have you seen in in um, div divisiveness in nationalities, different people's well, nationalities, different I, people's I, religion, I, yeah. different people's okay. ages, different people's sexuality? I mean, th those are all big divisive. Uh, um, well, I believe in, in black civil rights in this country. Always have, always will. But I believe in the civil rights of everybody. And I think that many times the black community and the black leaders try and say, well, we're more important to be taken, our needs to be taken care of than anybody else's. And rather than say that what happened to us shouldn't happen to anybody. And then- well, I, I do think that's what the leaders do say. I, I don't, don't know, I don't know. We're they more can, important. I think that, for instance, Asians still are a race which is put upon in this country. I think, oh, Hispanic, geez almighty. You know, they still got it bad. Wait another 20 years, we'll be the number one. Yeah, well, you are Hispanic, aren't you? I didn't realize Correct, that. amigo. Yeah, but I mean, but, but am I right? I mean, do Hispanics have it worse right now than blacks in this country for opportunities? I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't have see, that. See, I don't think we should even ask that question. I don't think there should ever be a question of my needs are more important than your needs. I agree with you. You know, and 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 we have to do something about that. We don't do anything about that. Uh, and and blacks are always saying, "Well, we don't have these rights. We don't have those rights." If if blacks would look at what's happened in the last eighty three years of my life, it's night and day. You know, I things mean, have changed, huh? Things have changed. I mean, who are who are some of the the biggest uh, money makers, if we were going to go to money makers in this country, they're, they're black athletes, black performers, you know, black businessmen. I mean, it's it, the opportunity is out there for them, but the opportunity isn't really out there for, you know, for people who come up from south of the border or even want to live here, you know? So it gets worse. But what I was talking about earlier when I said that uh, when I was growing up, everybody knew their place. I knew where my white community was and blacks knew where they had to live. And I always remember the story of my, uh, my best friends were the Barron brothers and their father, Theo Barron, was just a wonderful guy. The only guy in San Rafael, California, black businessman in San Rafael, California. And that's because he had a shoe shine shop and he hmm. had a shoe repair shop. And uh, I, I went to meet them. They lived in Marin City, which was where all the blacks lived. And I said, uh, why do you live here, Theo? Because you make a lot of money out of your business in San Rafael. And he said to me, I'll never forget it. He said, I really want to thank you white folks. I said, for what? He said, for making me very wealthy. Because, for your I, shoes. because I can't live anywhere but here. And this is cheap. <laughs> You know, and they're going to be building some homes here for people to live in Marin City, and I'm going to buy one of them, and they're really cheap. He says, I've got this ton of money I was never able to spend because you people put me in a box. And I, that, I, suddenly that's what racism meant to me, you know, is that why can't you come to, I, I was really stupid, I was a kid. I said, and this was what time? Why can't you come to San Anselmo and live in San Anselmo? And he said, they won't sell to me. This, what what, what this, time was this? I was maybe 18 at the time, 17, 18. Yeah. And, and what is Marin City like now, today? You know, I haven't even looked at it, but I would imagine it's still probably it is the poor part of Marin. 
But, really? but if you're black, you can move into San Anselmo and you can move into San Rafael and you can move into Larkspur. In those days, you couldn't. Mm. That was impossible. And so I learned my lesson, you know? I learned my lesson about what racism was and how it limited people because I couldn't see how this wonderful guy, Theo Barron, who had this very thriving business in San Rafael, couldn't afford a home in San Anselmo. Well, he mm. could. He could, accord, uh, he could afford one of the better homes in San Anselmo, but they wouldn't sell to him. And so in that respect, when I said they knew their place, you, you know, he knew his place. He said, I know the restrictions put upon me because I'm black. And um, so he, uh, you know, he had bought a beautiful home on the hill in Marin City, and that's where the kids lived until one of them died. Uh, drowning accident in the bay my best friend uh, and uh, in fact this was a friend who said to me and I got my first real lesson in racism he said to me uh, uh, after I got back from the service well good to see you but we can't hang around anymore and he said why he said because you know things are changing with race relations and so on in this country mm -hmm. and I just can't be your friend any longer and that wow. just just absolutely, you know. Yeah, that's that's something I've never yeah. experienced. That's something I, yeah. I never knew. Yeah, which and he, he said, well, we've run out of time here. But what he said basically was, you know, there's a lot of racial stuff happening. He says, I love you. You've been my friend over the years, but I can't be friends with you anymore. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Well, that, I'm, next I'm thing happy he, to say that, that as a Hispanic... Uh, and the, probably as the voice of the Hispanic community, that that I cherish my good Jewish friend Alex Bennett. Oh, I cherish my good uh, Mexican friend Albert Reynoso. I'm Mexican. What are you? Which what's what? Peruvian? Peruvian. Oh, you're worse. You're Peruvian. Is you that got, worse? You got any cocaine? Uh, no. Anyway, no. ladies and gentlemen, that is the Peruvian Albert Reynoso. <laughs> bye bye, Albert. Adios. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I probably should have had my, my microphone level just higher than it was, but oh well. Eh, I never get these things right anymore. Hi, how are you, everybody? Uh, it's, uh, what is this? This is uh, Wednesday. Uh, uh, right after the 4th of July, and uh, it, it, glad to have you here, have you all aboard. And uh, we have a couple of people who are already uh, ready to go here, so let me just bring them on. And um, let's see here. Well, there's, there's half of Jeff. We always get a half of Jeff. Jeff? This is uh, Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, uh, right after the 4th of July. Jeff, and now you've got to can't, yeah, get rid of your audio. And uh, we uh, have oh. a, we're already um, ready to go here, so let me just... Oh, okay. Speaking of cocaine, speaking of cocaine. Huh? Speaking of speaking cocaine. Of cocaine. What, 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 where did cocaine come up? Yeah. The end of your interview, you were talking about Peruvian cocaine. From, oh, yes, uh, yes, of course, because that was our good friend, Albert Reynoso, who is Peruvian. I didn't know he was Peruvian, to tell you the damn truth, you know, hmm. so. They, they found a little know. bag of cocaine in the White House. Well, yeah, he's the one that left it, right. <laughs> what what do you want to bet that it was left there by some right winger who wanted to make the, the them look bad? No, huh? I think it was left by somebody who dropped their baggie of cocaine. Yeah, you, you think so? We, we, <clears throat> I can't say what company I was working at, but night shift, uh, somebody found a small baggie of crystal because you know they they take crystal and you chop it up and you snort it and it keeps you awake more than coke. Well, you, you're actually, you're talking about meth. Yeah, crystal meth. Yeah. So so uh, so the. Uh, Somebody turned it in and told somebody, and they reviewed the camera, and they found, yeah, they found some guy had left his baggie there, so he got fired pretty quick. Really? Mm. No. Okay. Yeah. No. You know, that's the way. Yeah, somebody lose it. There, there's a really funny meme of some girl taking a, a, 
she gave her mom her phone to take a picture, and the baggie was actually stuck to the back of her of her phone. It oh. Must have got stuck like in her purse or something. Really? Oh, Very okay. Funny. Well, anyway, I'm trying to bring my camera up. Here we go. Now I look brighter. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how how uh, did you all have a good Fourth of July? What'd you? Oh what did you do, uh, Brian? Uh, we did Knott's Berry Farm because we couldn't get Disneyland tickets. So we Adrian had her her uh, competition. So after that, from San Diego, we drove up to Knott's Berry Farm, did that for the day, and then drove. Actually, we drove home on the Fourth of July. Uh, I imagine it'd be pretty hard to get into uh, into Disney Land on the Fourth of July. Yeah, we did. We've done it for a couple of years in a row in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, I just waited too long to get them. So. But then when, once you go there, though, the problem is that once you go there, uh, you um, um, have to wait in line forever to get on any ride. Yeah. We, you know, we went to um, Disney World. Um, my um, my ex-girlfriend and I. Uh, on, uh, what was it like? January 15th. And we found that was the best time to go. We walked. We walked onto every ride. Just walked right onto them. You know. That's because the park was closed. No, the park <laughs> wasn't. It wasn't closed. But you would have thought it was. You know. Wow. Uh, Fourth of July is not as bad as everybody thinks. Well, it's it's terrible here in New York. Uh, it, well, it's not terrible here in New York. Actually, everybody leaves New York and goes out to Fire Island, you know, and out to the island. So you really, you're really better off staying in Manhattan over that weekend. Uh, but what happened last night? I'll tell you what happened last night. All of a sudden, Marjorie calls to me. I'm in the the guest room in my usual prone position, watching something, and. Uh, she says to me, look out the window. And I come go into her the bedroom, the, our bedroom, and I look out the window, and there's this whole phalanx of cops blocking the intersection. And then there's a cop going up and down the street with his, um, you know, his megaphone blaring, saying, uh, everybody go home. <laughs> And we, we didn't know what it was. This morning, somebody, one of our neighbors, told us what was going on. Fail on donuts? No. <laughs> In New York has had some problems with some shootings. Okay? Oh, yeah. And they didn't, and there was somehow, there was just a ton of people all gathered at this one intersection. Hmm. And they wanted to break it up. Because they were afraid that the guns might... Well, of course, we live in a black neighborhood, right? Talk about racism still existing in the police force in New York City, right? I mean, if this, if this, were, an, if this were an intersection downtown, uh, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't even worry about it. They would ah, oh, those you know, the gay people, they could just have their parties, you know, blah, 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 blah. But here they just went, oh, boy, this could turn into people shooting each other because... Mm -hmm. These are all black people, uh, and uh, that's what it was about. It, it had, was nothing else. I mean, probably nothing was going to happen. There was nobody shooting at anybody. There was none of that. But they just sent all the police up to get rid of all the people blocking and, uh, and you know, it, it congregating in this intersection. So that was a little excitement, you know. Racism is popular in most big city police departments. They'd like to believe that it isn't. Mm -hmm. You would like to believe that in a big city, that it's the small cities you got to worry about. But in the big city, hell, still here. Last, you know. last Saturday I was in San Francisco, and there was a group of white people, uh, youngsters, yeah. fighting a group of black youngsters. You know, and they were all like 15, 16. The police came, ordered the white kids to stand on the other side of the street, and then proceeded to search and research and harass and handcuff the black kids. Jeez. I mean, it was mutual combat. I mean, we, we watched it. Somebody else called the police, but we sort of watched it for a few minutes. You know, there were no knives or guns or chains or anything like that. But, you know, I mean, the police are, you know, I guess the black people are the target. The white people couldn't have started this. Hmm. How yeah. stupid. 
Yeah, I, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's not good what they're doing, okay? No. You know? No. Uh, and, uh, uh, but anyway, so that was what happened here last night. And it's the first time I've, I've seen anything like that, wow, since I've been in here, since I've lived in this neighborhood, you know? I mean, God knows you guys, it's hard enough to find a cop when you really need him around here. But all of a sudden, there was like, it was like, had to be the, a phalanx of cops blocking the intersection from one side to the other. And I would say there were maybe 20 of them, wow. shoulder to shoulder. And then they started walking down the street to clear it out. You know, well, I mean, come on. I mean, you know, the problem with guns is the problem with guns. Let's, let's take care of that as an entirely separate issue. You know, but uh, we're not. By the way, uh, a lot of a lot of shootings over the weekend. That was good. You know, we we really aren't letting the rest of the world down when they're afraid to come here. You know, what what do we have? Five different incidences in this country. Yeah, Philadelphia, New York. Yeah. Um. And those are the ones that I yeah. But there were. I think there was one down in Texas. You know, of course. It, yeah. Somebody in Florida, George. Oh, really? they're falling behind. They had to catch up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said to Marjorie when I when she said, "Oh, there were all these shootings." I said, "Well, thank God we're keeping up our uh, our quota." You know, it seems like every day there's another one. You know, and yet you then have people going around going, "Oh, the first, the Second Amendment. We got to protect the Second Amendment." Well, if protecting the Second Amendment means that a lot of people are going to die as a result then we got to reconsider that second amendment and how it's written and how it's applied yes you know i think the only reason it existed in the first place was we were afraid that the english were going to come back in and try and you know um <laughs> load their muskets load their muskets and come after us and we had to be able to you know bear the, uh, the right to bear arms but come on that's an old philosophy. It's an old uh, uh, thing, and I think that we got to we got to we, we 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 just can't, this can't go on any longer. I mean, it, it everybody here, even people on this panel, are in danger as a result of the way guns are and the the, the way in which they're applied. Uh, I don't know, you know. I mean, I I just don't understand people. I mean, you have guns, and you're you're. You're a gun proponent, aren't you? Basically, Alan, but but with restrictions, with, with lim within limits. Within I don't limits. Think, I don't think that AR-15 should be sold to civilians. There's no need. Yeah. A gun that's made for the military and police, civilians shouldn't have them, and that's what's used in the majority of these mass shootings. Well, I mean, when they say uh, the the right to bear arms shall not be infringed, does that mean I can own an atom bomb if I want to? In fact, if you consider that an arm, no. It, it, but it is an arm. Yeah. Absolutely. No question about it. Okay. You know, I want my right to, to have an atomic device and to be able to use it at will. That would have cleared the intersection last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But Made a difference to the paint on the side of the buildings, too. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. But anyway, so you know, uh, that was my that was my Fourth of July. Otherwise, we didn't do anything. We didn't leave the house because it was too hot outside. Yeah, you know, and I was going to go walk today. Ninety-two degrees. Are you kidding me? Do you know? Really? Yeah, ninety-two degrees here. I don't know. And right now it's uh, seventy-eight. It's gone down quite a bit, but it was ninety-two at one point. And do you know that today? was the hottest day in the history of the earth. Really? Yeah, it was like 62 yeah. degrees or something? Oh. It, 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 is, it was the hottest day in the history of the earth. Yep. Yep. Uh, Which means something's happening. It, well, if you don't believe in global warming, come on. Oh, okay. You know, you don't want to get rid of your guns. You don't want to believe in global warming. I mean, what's left for you to believe with us uh, not having to show you the 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 the, 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 the what's the word I'm looking for? 
Well, anyway. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. Alan. So, the Republican Party, going back to the Second Amendment for a minute, the Republican Party believes that it's okay to stop childbirth. I mean, it's not okay to stop childbirth, you know, like through abortions. Mm -hmm. But once they're out of the womb, it's okay to shoot everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a, a crazy situation out there. Uh, my mind is blank tonight. Wow, jeez. Really going? Huh? I'm going when in. For, get, when do you get to my age? I'm going in for a CT scan on what is it? Friday. Yeah. It's yeah. for my lungs. Well, because I had a couple of nodules, and they just want to make sure they haven't grown or done anything horrible. Which they won't because they're the kind that don't, you know. <laughs> they you know, nodules in the lungs are not particularly uh, uh, dangerous, you know. So, okay. But I, it, my doctor went. I, my doctor basically was saying, I don't want you to sue me if I don't uh, do right by you. So I'm sending you in uh, for this. Uh, but I was reading today uh, something uh, where they were saying. The trouble is that in a lot of cases, what we're doing is we are over medicating people, overdoing tests and things like that. Over testing. And when you do something like what's happening here, what I'm going through, you, I'm going through a little bit of agita, agita because of it. And uh, the fact is that we cause a, create a situation which people are a little bit worried, you know about things when they oh you got to go in and get a ct scan on your chest again you know and you wonder well is it going to be is it going to be horrible this time i figure if they keep looking long enough they're going to find something yeah you know yeah meanwhile i'm just feeling tired and lightheaded that's all and that's because i haven't been able to get out and walk the days that i've been able to get out and walk i feel pretty good afterwards you know whatever happened to your pelotron or whatever it is oh that she gave it away she sold oh. it she oh. sold it yeah yeah i was gonna say instead of walking get on that thing yeah, well she had a peloton here she bought it she used it for <laughs> six months eight months and then she got tired of using it and sold it off to somebody I know the feeling. I didn't have a Peloton, but I have a life cycle. It's 10 years old. It's been sitting in the front room so I could watch TV while I ride it. I probably rode it 10 miles in the eight years I've owned it. Well, I, I, I tell people. <clears throat> <throat> yeah, I tell people I have a stationary bike, but it isn't meant to be that way. <laughs> yeah. Charlie's got his. He uses his all the time. Yep. Yeah. You, how often do you use it? Every day? Any day that I don't umpire, I use it. After running around for four hours, I don't need it. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. All right. That's good. Yes. I have yeah. one, but I don't use it every day. I used it this morning. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm going swimming. I went swimming today, too. Really? Yeah, it's I, do you next know? to the couch, Jeff. It's a good place to set the remote control so you can find it. I can't <laughs> tell you the last time I have been swimming. Yeah. I think it was when I was in Ibiza years ago and I dipped into the yeah. Mediterranean. And that was about it, you know, because I've never had a place with a pool. So I didn't have easy access to a pool. And, yeah, we have municipal pools, but I'm not putting my body in those septic tanks, you know. Um, oh, where I, where I live, you have to, you have to, you have to, Get yourself all hosed up and soaked and whatever before you get in the water. Before you get in the pool. Right. Yeah. Right. I, re I remember when I was a kid, we had a place called the Marin uh, Town and Country Club. And it was out in Fairfax, and it had a pool. And before you could go into the pool, you used to have to walk through this water that had, had antiseptic in it to kill fungi on your feet. Does anybody remember those? Yeah. Yep. You do remember those, huh? Sure. Yeah. The public pools. Uh, public yeah. pools, yeah. I remember yeah. having to take a shower before you could go swimming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You always had to rinse off. Yeah. yeah. And nobody ever did. Then they'd pee in the pool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you can rinse off all you want, but that isn't going to prevent you from peeing in the pool. And many times, as you guys know, you hit the water, what's the first thing your body wants to do? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you do. 
you know, that's why chlorine was invented. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Kept the pool warm, too. Hmm? <laughs> Kept, the pool. Kept the pool warm, you said. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, but I haven't, I haven't been swimming in years. I was mentioning this to Marjorie yesterday. And I said, if we go on vacation, we should go someplace where there's, you know, uh, an ocean or a sea or something like that. Like the Mediterranean is a great place to go swimming. I haven't been swimming since they cut my toes off. Oh, mm. my God. Charlie, Charlie, post, Charlie posted a picture of his foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when they were talking about Deion Sanders and his problems. You know. <laughs> yeah, Alex, you got to see his picture. Send his, I don't, send want, his picture I don't <laughs> want to see it. The kind of thing makes me. It's a, it's a visual I'll never get out of my head anymore. <laughs> I gotta see that every day, so I don't want to hear about that. I know. Yeah, but yeah, but at least I don't have to see that shirt on you every day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now send it to us. Think of the, think of all the soap you save. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh boy! Oh, oh boy! Uh, yeah. Yes, Jeff. So I, I don't really, I don't go fishing <laughs> or jumping in the water as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. I was in Brazil, mm -hmm. all places, mm -hmm. and I was with Pam and it was real hot. And I'm on the ocean and I, I decided to take a walk and I walk and walking around and looking at all the people in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And it was so hot. I just jumped in the water. What the hell? I jumped in the water, I started swimming out a little bit. All of a sudden, I can't swim back. The ocean is going out. Got under tow, yeah. What you get and a, I'm trying to get back in. Did you get a riptide? Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Wow. Well, how, I, well, you're still alive, so. I, I survived. <laughs> Two guys who were professional mm -hmm. doing this. Jumped out, grabbed me, pulled me back in. Wow. Wow. That's why I don't swim in the ocean. Yeah, well, like I say, I don't swim as much as I used to. What? No, so you could swim in the Amazon if you're in Brazil. Yeah, yeah with the piranhas in there, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, 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 yeah, snakes and all kinds of good yeah. stuff. You know, in Boston, they have a lot of snakes in the ocean there. People don't go to certain places because the sharks will get you. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't sound like a great vacation for anyone. Mm. A friend of mine a friend of mine lives in uh Sydney, Australia, and he's a spider specialist or whatever you call it. Mm. And, and uh he says that we have ten of the most deadly spiders, ten of the most deadly snakes. We have yeah. alligators, crocodiles, and mm. sea urchin and sea snakes that are deadly. I said, well, it sounds like a lovely place to visit. Yeah. It you is know? a nice place to go. To. Yeah, but the, Sydney has the Sydney funnel web spider, which is, you know, uh, back and back to be the most deadly spider along with the Brazilian wandering spider. But uh, both are very aggressive. But the Brazilian wandering spider hides during the day and then goes crawls the forest area or something is what he told me and finds bugs and eats it and stuff like that. But People have been bit by him. And so they have anti, he works He works at a clinic that develops anti-venom. And they actually milk these spiders for the anti-venom. Who, uh, who, uh, who has the job of milking a spider? I don't know. Uh, they, 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 they make the thing stand. It, what happens when a, when a Sydney funnel, web, maybe all funnel webs, when they're threatened, they stand up on their hind legs and they get the big manticles or whatever they call it that they pierce your skin with. And he, you can see little drops of venom coming off. Yeah, and maybe so, it's like you know an orga. I don't know, but you definitely don't want this thing to bite into you because it can kill a human being in 15 minutes. Although they haven't had many uh, deaths since 1958 because they've had venom. So. I think the other part is, I think people in Sydney just love to tell anybody who's never been there before about how many poison snakes that we have that are gonna probably get you. And they don't I don't I don't I don't think the poison snakes run around in populated areas as a rule. 
but spiders could be anywhere. I mean, he said yeah. he, he his his child stuck his foot into into a shoe in their in their house and got bit, and he went and took the kid to the ER and took the spider with him in a Ziploc bag, and it was a Sydney funnel web, and they were able to save the kid and stuff like well, that because they had venom. But when I was a kid, know. my my parents bought a home in San Anselmo, California. And it was up on a hill, and it was uh, uh, it uh, had it was two stories, and uh, downstairs it got a little damper than the upstairs. And uh, one night I'm asleep, I'm lying there rather, I'm in my bed, and I'm trying to go to sleep, and all of a sudden I hear this sound that's kind of like a click, 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 okay. Mm. And I pull up my pillow, and there's a scorpion. Oh God. And so we, my mother had these, these, uh, uh, I don't know, hot dog tongs or whatever the tongs you use, you know, to, and she would get it whenever this happened, when they get, we'd have some kind of weird predator animal insect like that. Uh, he would, uh, she would get the prongs and she would grab them and grab like the, the, uh, the Hail. scorpion, and then go out the door and throw it off our off on into the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they would always say to me, they said to me after this particular incident, by the way, be on the lookout. They usually travel in pairs. <laughs> oh, great. And I yep. had a hard time going back to sleep that night or any night for quite a while after that. You know, you know I had a friend of mine that had a a big spider end up in their cabin while he was in Brazil and they took some tongs and threw it out and, you know it was like probably a tarantula but he's freaked about spiders and he threw it out in the woods the trouble is the spider was hanging on to the thing and he brought it back and set it and, and uh, pretty soon the tarantula is crawling on him and he's about ready to have a heart attack and somebody just picked it up took it off and set you it you want down. to know something about tarantulas what you know why they use them a lot in movies uh, they're not they very good. They're not, ugly. they're not dangerous, but they look ugly. Well, they're, yeah. They're, no, they're, they're, they're not dangerous. They're, their bite hurts, but other than venom. They're not poisonous, yeah. but it yeah, hurts. they're not poisonous. They're giant fangs. They're yeah. poisonous. Usually yeah, they hairy, use them in though. movies because they weren't, they really, they were pretty docile, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think most tarantulas are, have more hair on their head than uh, Phil Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> or me. When I was in graduate school. My office mate had a terrarium or whatever you call it. They had a tarantula in it. He would take it out and let it crawl all up his arms and shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Yeah. Let yeah. me know when you put them back in the cage. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't think we have critters like that anymore in Marin. I think uh, life has gotten a little too settled and. All the animals have run away somewhere. I mean, we didn't have, for instance, you never had rattlesnakes or anything like that in the Bay Area. Mm. You know, you know where you never have any rattlesnakes mm -hmm. is up in the like Lake Tahoe, mm -hmm. because the uh, the um, uh, what do you call it? The altitude is so high; they don't survive in that uh, that no, climate. No, they freeze. They freeze to death. Yeah. So you don't find uh, you don't find rattlesnakes in that. There, there are rattlesnakes in the woods. We used to go shooting at a range in the woods, and every once in a while you'd see a rattlesnake move through it. We just got out of its way and let it go. Whenever we went out, you know, camping in one way or another, we always had a, a little snake bite kit. You ever have one yeah. of those with a little suction cup on it? Pretty much worthless. It, it, really? <laughs> yeah. What they recommend? But my friend that in Sydney that does this. They recommend like if something bites you on the arm that you wrap, you clean it out with it, some antiseptic, and then you wrap the arm really tight, like a like a tourniquet to stop the blood and the venom from flowing into your body, and then you rest the person to the hospital. Oh, okay. And then they have anti venom there, and they get a shot of that, yeah. and you're okay. Yeah. Well, that's what the Boy Scout kid had was a tourniquet, and then you take the cup and you suck it out as much as you can, and then tourniquet again. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, well, I like putting that tourniquet around the scoutmaster's neck and trying that name. Well, I remember it was a little That's thing, the and you and you open it up, and there's a razor blade inside. Yeah, yeah. And then you would use half of this thing to suck the. Uh, you cut it. Yeah. In an X, I think, if I remember correctly. Yep. 
and then you would suck it out mm. with uh, the, uh, the 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 de- suck it out the rubber tourniquet. part. Of it. Yeah. So you pull out what you can and then stop it with a tourniquet. Yeah. 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 Well, either that or it, it, in most cases, if you're out walking around, it, in those days, I used to wear boots. You know, cowboy boots. Yeah, and yeah. they they're, were high. They're typically, hmm? they're typically in the lowland and the foothills where it's hot. Really? Yeah. Oh boy. Well, anyway, I lived in Marin, and we had all kinds of critters there. You know. Yeah, except for Marin is now built up, like you were saying, and I think there's a lot less we get critters. Tons of rattlers. I, yeah, I remember. I, of, I, uh, I just thought about it. I actually in Marin saw the longest, biggest snake I've ever seen. It just was crawling in our backyard or something. I mean, he disappeared and whatever, but I mean, he was massive. And that was Ron Jeremy. Mm. No, never mind. Is Ron Jeremy still in jail, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he hasn't gone on trial yet, but he's still in jail. In jail. Poor guy. Yeah, well, I I always kind of liked Ron, you know. He was nice to me. He had some beautiful women. Oh, you actually met him. I didn't know that. Huh? Oh, I knew Ron. Yeah, Ron was, I've yeah. known Ron quite. I knew Ron quite well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, not that I uh, approved of his activities because you know, I would, you had your own activities. I had my own activities. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, you know. Um, so was he from the Bay Area or something? No, Ron was from the East Coast, I think. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. So where'd you know him at? While you were on the East Coast or the West Coast? At both places. Oh, okay. Yeah, I knew him uh, when I was in New York, and he used to do Midnight Blue a lot. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I knew him then. And then when I moved to California, he moved to California because that's where the whole porn industry moved. It, yeah. was, it was in New York. At one point, New York was porn central. And then it all moved out to California, so he moved out with it, and he was in L.A. And every time I go down to L.A., I'd maybe bump into him or whatever, you know. And, uh, wow. uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I never met him, but I feel a closeness as I've seen him in about 20 films that I have. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't watch that stuff anymore. Only 20? Wow. You both, you both had an orgasm to the same women. I yeah, see. probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. uh, he, uh, no, one night, one night, this was, I was, uh, I had the, I had this woman who was my date. I, I don't know where I met her or whatever, but I, we were, we went to dinner because Al Goldstein had, uh, was doing a dinner. Oh no, no, this was with Kathleen, my friend Kathleen. She was down there with me. And we met up with Ron Jeremy because we went out to dinner with Al Goldstein at uh, uh, Spago's. And uh, afterwards, uh, Ron Jeremy, who was part of the group, said, uh, hey, listen, do you want to go out to Pasadena to see the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Because you know how people in those days were doing when they play the Rocky Horror Picture Show, they all do the parts mm-hmm. and everything like that. Throw the toast and all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all of that. And uh, the one in Pasadena was all done by porn actors and actresses. Wow. And, and they would play all the parts. Uh, and so he said, well, let's go out there. But first, he says, i got to go over to, uh, God, I'm trying to remember who... Tell, tell me a mediocre actor uh, <laughs> who, who was in, uh, oh, damn it. What was his name? Ronald Reagan? No, 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 no. He was in that well, picture about the, it, no, he was in that picture that was a uh, Stephen King novel uh, or short story about these boys who go to see a dead body. Or, oh, uh, Stand By Me? Stand By Me, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was in it. And now who was in Huh? Jerry O'Connell? No. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, uh, River Phoenix? Ri- oh. No, not River Phoenix. Wait a minute. Let me look this up here. Hold on a second. Where's my... Where's my... Uh, uh, here we go. What, Stand By Me? Okay, Stand... What was that about kids coming up? You know, little kids. Stand By Me. Eh? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, they find a dead know. body and they got to go <clears throat> see it. Oh, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, I don't remember. We that had either. Will Wheaton in there. You had Corey Rick. Feldman. Corey Feldman. That's it. Oh, yeah, that's who. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we don't wind up at Corey Feldman's house. We wind up at Corey Feldman's father's house. This is what a what a low life, low rent night this is that I'm being a part of, and uh, uh, we and then I remember ending up the night in a parking lot with oh. uh, in a parking lot with uh, you remember me telling this story already? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, his trunk, right? Yeah, he 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 opens the trunk to his car and he has all his press clippings. Oh and he's God. sitting there wow. at three o'clock in the morning, showing us all his press clippings. Who does that? Wow. that Ron would. Jeremy does that. If I had that, no. well, I would do it. Hell yeah! <laughs> Wait a minute. I I I, I got to tell you, I probably have as many press clippings as he did, and I didn't have them in the back trunk of my car. Okay. Yeah, but how many of them had beautiful women in them? Quite a few. Anyway. Oh, well, there you go. And, and who's to say? Are you saying that all porno actresses were beautiful? Yeah. Uh, not all, but a lot that I saw. A lot of them are. Signs yeah. Are great. Boy. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, well, let's go into a topic we've never done here. Who are your favorite porno actresses? Huh? Well, you know, one of mine was. Or, or, let me let me put it this way: Who 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 are your favorite female porn actresses that were in your spank bank? <laughs> the, the list yeah. is long. Yes, Brian. Now, Ivory I, Snow I, Girl. <laughs> I, who, 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 who the hell pays Girl attention Chambers, to names? Yeah. I hear Adrian walking in, so. <laughs> <laughs> Dream speakers up. Well, actually, I, knew, I got to know Marilyn quite well, and uh, yeah. Marilyn finally called me up once, and she said, You know something I got to tell you? She says, I've really been wanting to go out with you. She said, so, Why the you next, San Francisco? so the next time, yeah, the next time I'm in the Bay Area, let's get together and let's hang out. I can't tell you how many times I've had that dream. And oh, I God. said, I said, absolutely, because I thought the world of her. I really liked Marilyn a lot. I'd known her for a long, long time. Uh, and um, uh, so I said, sure. And the next thing I knew, she was dead. She had died. You know, so it was the date that never happened. You know, uh, but uh, she, she, you know, she was a very nice lady, very nice lady, and I, I felt so bad when she was gone because she had lived a kind of a weird life, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, when I was in my twenties, my young twenties, because <clears throat> we didn't have cell phones, I had a little book, and I called it my booty call book, mm -hmm. and these were girls that I got together with a couple different times, and. We went our ways, and then I thought, well, you know, let's go through the book and see if at what one of them's available for a date. Hmm. Yeah, and what is there an end to this story or anything? <laughs> uh, yeah, like one of them would usually be available going through the book, and we'd go out on a date and do our thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, well, anyway. Marilyn so. Chambers was never in there, so. No, no. Yeah. saw her in a lot of movies, though. Yeah. Absolutely. She was the, she was a popular porn actress. That's oh sure. yeah. But you, you remember the uh, the oh what's the club called in San Francisco on Polk, where the two brothers owned it. Oh the the the, the uh, what do you call it the. Uh, that's that's what uh, the, 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 uh, One of them. The brothers Mitchell named, brothers. The Mitchell. Yeah, brothers. Mitchell brothers. One was named Artie and the other was Bob or something. Yeah. And killed the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he went to jail and came back out and went back into business again. Yeah. 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 That was a, that, that was a sad that was a sad situation. Because um, he was the asshole, the guy that shot him. The the, the brother The brother the, wasn't an asshole. No, the brother wasn't an asshole if I remember. The, 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 the brother who got shot was kind of an asshole. Actually he was not an asshole so much as he was somebody who had a bad drug problem. And his life was so horrible that his brother, out of a certain abundance of love, shot him. You know, if you can understand that, if you can even conceive of that. Because you don't usually hear about brothers killing brothers. It's not 
well, Cain and Abel, I guess it goes back a long way, but uh, from what I, from what I heard, that was what what the problem was there. That he That's actually probably why he got a short sentence. Well, he just couldn't take the fact that his brother was such a loose cannon, and yep. it just and got they owned the business together. His brother was snorting all the profits. Well, I don't know if he was doing that, but it was coming close. Yeah, yeah. He was. It was just a difficult situation. Yeah. Uh, and I can't remember which one lived and which one died. I think it was Artie that lived, right? I think so. I'll, I'll yeah. Google it. Yeah. Um, I knew them briefly. I didn't, I didn't know them closely, but I knew them, you know. Um, but anyway, so, um, you know, uh, but, but anybody, uh, was there ever an actress that you were hot for beside Marilyn Chambers? Uh, 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 Charlie? Oh, lots of them. <laughs> oh, lots of them. Well, come on, name one. <laughs> Well, we've talked to, it, it just like talking about actresses. Halle Berry is probably my favorite. Oh, no, I'm not talking about, uh, I'm, I'm talking about porn actresses. Well, although, yeah. Although, uh, is that is that an oxymoron, porn actress? When, when you watch Monster's Ball, it's it's, uh, it's a porn. Yeah, like, yeah, I guess you're right. Berry. I guess you're right. <laughs> Halle Berry, we're going to have to fight over her, Charlie. Well, <laughs> if, you, if you can masturbate to it, it's porn. Well, you know, well, in, in, in my high school, <laughs> during high school, we saw Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and when Phoebe Cates, you know, opened yeah. up her swimsuit, yeah, I, <laughs> I think I had to leave for the restroom at the drive-in. <laughs> Jim, Jim killed Artie. Jim killed Artie. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, I mean, it... it um, it, it's kind of it was it was a very sad situation that that situation. Yeah, yeah. Even you, when you're in Live 105, I mean you're sort of out of all that stuff from Midnight Blue and everything, right? That was all New York stuff, right? Uh, the Midnight Blue stuff, yeah, was was New York, yeah. But yeah, I did when you came to San Francisco and stuff, you weren't really. I mean, you weren't doing any of that then. I mean, that was like years and years, like decades. Well, I did have I did have some adult actresses on. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. That's you know, right. I had on uh, people like Ginger Lynn, Marilyn, yeah. of course, uh, had, uh, why, Christy why Canyon, not? Christy Canyon. Canyon. Yeah, she was always on, I remember she was on like the Breakfast with Bennett's too, right? Wasn't she? Yeah. Did she get a one or two? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if she was on that, but I'm trying to remember who was on what, but. Uh, I know. remember she was. Uh, yeah, there. but I, I always had a great uh, affection for uh, Ginger Lynn, and I told her so. I said I really gave you give you a lot of credit because you know she was she, her problem was she was going with um, she was going with Charlie Sheen. Oh, and, and and it wasn't just you know Charlie Sheen going out with a porno actress. They were really they really had a relationship going, and the family she got involved in this whole big thing that happened where uh, uh, the, um, who was that actress? The, uh, the, 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 the t uh, underage actress. Uh, oh, Linda uh, Blair. Uh, no. Oh, no, the porn um, uh, one was underage for such a long time. Yeah, and, and when the cops busted. Jodie Foster. Well, no. Not no, Jodie no, no, Foster. No, 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 no. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember her name right now. Brooke Shields? No, 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 no not she, a popular You know, you keep actress. saying these names, I'll never come up with it. Oh, okay. A porn actress who was underage for many, many years. She did oh, many, oh many porn films. actress. Okay. Porn actress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, and then she did a lot of straight films, too. She Roger Corman hired her for films. Uh, yeah, there's been a few that made it from porn to, to regular yeah. Well, movies. Ginger Lynn did for a while there. But here was the thing. When, when it came out that this girl was underage, uh, she had done films with him. And, I mean, the police were just trying to get her to turn names in. And, to, and she says, I just couldn't. She couldn't do it. So she wound up going to jail for... Well, maybe a half a year or something like that. Yeah, Tracy Lords. Tracy Lords. Tracy Lords. Lords yeah. yeah. I started putting underage porn, and I'm like, wow, maybe I shouldn't put a search for this. This is bad. Well, Make I sure have... your VPN is on. I put yeah. actress on there for sure. <laughs> no, but but uh, um, um, she got into a lot of trouble for that, and they, they went after her taxes and everything else because she wouldn't turn turn in these producers mm -hmm. who were producing these movies 
Uh, and so they threw her in jail. Well, as a huh. result, the Sheen family said to Charlie, "You better stop seeing her." I mean, they were all Charlie but in, they were they were almost engaged. That's how how mm -hmm. in, how big that relationship was. Oh, she was, was gorgeous. Oh man, I love. If her. I remember, Martin Sheen didn't like her. Didn't like her son. Wasn't good for his career or something. Like Martin that. Sheen, the family. I said the family. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah right. Said to him. You can't, don't see her anymore because you know we don't like this. She's going to jail and blah blah blah, blah. and uh, so he stopped seeing her. And uh, I said to her, I said, you know, I really got to hand it to you. You gave up a lot because of principle that you wouldn't turn people in or turn in names or whatever. And I said, I really, you know, and I, I, I always appreciated her for that. Uh, so, but. Uh, how, uh, 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 Kevin, you've been quiet. Don't want to name any porno <laughs> actresses? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> good to you. Yeah. But, I mean, these were, you know, uh, she, she was a very good person. I really appreciated her. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I also like these people as people. I like Marilyn as a person. She's a decent, decent person, kind of, kind of sad on some level. You know, by the time I got to her, she was pretty much going to seed, you know, but I still liked her a lot, you know. But anyway, enough of that. So, the, yes, you're answering your question, Brian. Yes, a lot of these people still were, were around. I mean, you know, so um, anyway, yeah, so. How is so? I uh, we we didn't do anything yesterday on Fourth of July. Did you do anything, Kevin? I did. And what did you do? Uh, we finished selling all our fireworks for the last week for the kids. Selling uh, fire booth. wait a minute, selling fireworks. Can you sell fireworks now in California? No, just in our county, we we're allowed to sell fireworks. We do fundraising for the kids for the band. Really, yeah. and we did quite well. We just is there a limit? Is there a limit in the kind of fireworks you can sell? Yeah, they're the safe and sane ones, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, we we uh, we do that every year. It's our biggest fundraiser. We get seven days, and we just counted up all the uh, funds tonight and figured out how much we made and did quite well. What do you mean seven days? Uh, they just give we you- We have until, uh, from the 28th at noon until midnight last night. Mm -hmm. now, Sell all the fireworks we can. Now what kind, now are you, is there a limit on the kind of fireworks you can sell? Well, they, they have they have laws on what they can do in California. They can only go like 12 to 15 feet high. They can't leave the ground. They can only make so much noise and do so much color and stuff like that. And you can't. A sell lot of the, a lot of the counties and cities in California don't allow them nowadays. Like I don't think Santa Clara does. Portions of Santa Clara County doesn't. Portions mm -hmm. of Alameda County don't. Yeah, San Mateo County doesn't. Some parts of it. Um, but you know we're we're lucky enough to still do it. We have to kind of fight for it every year. But it's a big fundraiser. And uh, it helps out the band quite a bit. And there's like, I think there's 11 or 12 in town that all do it. The downtown association does it. A couple of churches do it. But you're not allowed to sell firecrackers, it. right? No, no. It's all, you know, the stuff in the fountains, you know. The, ooh, yeah, okay. Uh, pretty stuff, you know. And then we spend, I spend about uh, probably 12 to 14 hours a day doing it. And then uh, it's like a seven-day garage sale. You got to clear they, out the thing every night, yeah. put it all back in the next day, and take it out every night, put it back in the next day, and keep track of it. And then my wife's birthday is on the Fourth of July, so we God, when to, I was growing up, you weren't allowed in. to have any of that stuff. You know, you had to get it illegally from people, and you weren't allowed back, to have really, it. Yeah. really, yeah, really, yeah. When that was that? We were kids around here, everywhere you could buy them. Yeah, when we were kids, you could buy it everywhere. Yeah. No, they the slowly I mean, got rid of them as you got older. I, well, really, because I, I remember I, when I was a kid about the, well, the biggest thing I would do were sparklers, you know. Yeah. I mean that—that's the the 
the pussy of the of the fireworks is the, yeah. is the yeah, and those sparklers. are one of our biggest sellers too. So yeah. really, sparklers? They're not even they're not like the old sparklers either. They're these funky ones with the paper, not the wire thing. You know, uh, yeah. What do you mean with the paper? They're paper. They're more they're more paper on a stick than they are oh, the wow. wire with the you know the, look like a arc welding. You uh, know. Okay. All right, but they're you know they're 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 okay you know they're fun. Yeah, is there a is last there a, forever and that whole thing? What is you the know? markup on those, Kevin? Huh? What is the markup on those? Like fifty percent, a hundred percent? Well, I don't know what the markup is. I know they're expensive as shit. You know, okay. we we call it burning money. <laughs> it's like going to Vegas. You're just you're going up there giving us money, and then you take it home and burn it. Um. But you know, for us, it's you know, mm -hmm. you know, it's a good cause for us. I mean, they give you about forty-three percent of what you sell, so <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah. But they do charge a lot for them. And, and you raise the money for what? For these these bands that you have? For the for the for the music program yeah. at the school. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's kind yeah. of your little your little what can yeah. I call it your your cause. Yeah, that's our cause. Yeah. yeah, and it's the biggest one we have all year. I mean, year. if you go and look up Kevin Stopper on uh, YouTube, you will see quite a few of these bands uh, doing their their thing. The yeah, latest... last for what seven years now, and I'm that this will be my last uh, official uh, activity for them. Now I'm going to become the if I need any if you need any help, call me. Not I'm going to be there. An emeritus. <laughs> Yeah. After a well, seven I, year the year. latest one I think that you put on was a was a band, an orchestra, right? Yeah, that was their farewell concert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and well, I well, when I was a kid, there Brian's were only head two or three guys that were missing fingers from the fireworks. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's Brian, what, Brian's just starting, so he, well, he's, he's he, getting he's into seen, it. And, I'm and, heading out of it. And what you should do is put pictures of your foot. Online and say this is what happens when you try to light fireworks with your toes. Ah, they, they always they always have that meme then it says something like, uh, "For so many for so many people, this is the last time they're actually going to have five, uh, ten fingers." Ten fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember, <laughs> today, remember back today in is the, the last day they'll have ten fingers. Some for remember some back in uh, right around 64, 65, 66, They had uh, Willie Mays on there. He said, "This is a blasting cap. Do not touch it." Yeah. It will hurt you. You know, well, remember Willie uh, Mays used to do that commercial for the Giants? I don't know. Yeah. The New York Giants uh, defensive back that had his fingers blown off. Yeah. It, oh, it, they would, because Hunter's Point was always, they were always finding blasting caps out there. And it was right around the 4th of July that kids would find them. Oh. And so they started doing commercials with Willie. You can still look them up on YouTube, I think. Yeah. Well, By the somebody, way, Willie Mays would do somebody it. Somebody was an acquaintance in high school. And he used to, for a quarter a piece, we'd watch him set off a firecracker in his hand. And somebody offered him uh, $10 to close his hand around the firecracker. Oh, oh, oh. That was a mistake. He oh. lost a couple fingers and ability to close his hand for the rest of his life. Yeah. Well, my brother blew up his hand in a sparkler. <laughs> With a sparkler? It burned it up. It oh, burned okay. it up, yeah. Oh, well, those sparklers could be really dangerous. Well, well, they they in. No, I think it's phosphorus that burns, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we had we had one last night. You know, we bought a package from the booth and we took it over to a friend's house and we were firing off. And we had one of those little box of frames. And all of a sudden, we're sitting there watching it, and the thing goes, "Well, bam!" and it shoots up into the air, and then it shot over here. And I'm going, "Holy crap! They're not supposed to leave the air." It was a it was a it was a dud, and it and it flew wow. one way and flew the other way, and you know some of them do go haywire. Now we got to go to Kevin's house next year for for Fourth of July. We we'll get to see the good fire. Well, you you tomorrow. come to, you come to my house, and it's like little Baghdad around this place. <laughs> yeah, it's it, they they show the Bay Area. They show from the hills. They show the whole Bay Area, and it's just going up everywhere. It, well, it's, you it know what crazy. happened a couple of years back. There was an influx of fireworks into the United States, illegal fireworks, and it hasn't stopped. Well, no. it stopped right. here. It, we didn't have. We've had. We had, right. night before, you know, Fourth of July and Fourth of July night. There've been 
some local fireworks going off in the air, big giant displays. But last year it started in March. Yeah. You know. Well, it, this year it's been pretty quiet just before. Usually it's a good month before. Now, I talked to my neighbor this morning because I wanted to see what went on around here because we were down down the road at a friend's house. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, I saw drones last night. So the drones were coming over. And he said, not only did they have the drones, but there was a laser light coming out of the drones and pointing at houses. Wow. So they had the drones, and I guess the laser was pointing at a house, and they could get the address from the GPS well, they're, they're on the drone. Think, yeah, they're wow. thinking of doing wow. away with fireworks displays and replacing them with the drone displays. Yeah. Because well, dude, this, is, <clears throat> this is a, what he's talking about is a law enforcement drone. Yeah, law enforcement. They were going after yeah, the people flying with, the, with the mortar. They're in the neighborhoods directing these things street by street. <clears throat> yeah, they're, they're going after the, the mortars. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. You come around here and it makes Great America and Disneyland look like Toyland. Oh, I'm really? definitely going to be there next year. It's crazy. Wow. wow. I mean, there's shit that rattles the walls. Yeah. yeah. We had a couple. Friend, I had right? the uh, other night, I'm lying in the guest room, and there is this explosion. I mean, that's the only way I could describe mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I mean, it was just, in fact, it was so loud that car horns started going off you know the burglar yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah started yeah, going very off. normal yeah and and still. i went who does that you know who does that yeah oh, they the, want to watch a big explosion and especially especially at one o'clock in the morning yeah. when everybody in the neighborhood's trying to sleep i'm going to take a picture of my my street right now and there's little mortar rocks all over the streets mm -hmm. yeah wow yeah. really <laughs> See, in New York, they stopped selling fireworks for this year. They hand out guns instead. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. Well, the trouble is with with firecrackers, we can't tell the difference between that and guns going off, and so we want to know what are guns and what are you know fireworks. So. Yeah. They, you know, just the drive, they just thing. drive to Nevada and pick up a truck truckload and bring them back. Yeah, the yeah, the interesting friend. thing is they have these shot spotters on phone poles in cities that have a lot of violence and they can the, the electronics can tell the difference between a firecracker and a gunshot really yeah, yeah. So well i was i was pretty surprised when they he said that there was a laser coming out of the drone and they were they were spotting it they'll probably that drone the down and there's a laser beam it's they'll, get a, they'll get a ticket in the mail in a couple of weeks if you, if you yeah. guys go go on youtube and there's a there's a drone uh show mm -hmm. from the grateful dead oh yeah yeah, I saw that. Yeah, they've been showing that. that my was in friend, I think Kevin, you may know this person, but he's Chinese. He, he has a custom down in your area. But he, he goes from Chinatown, San Francisco, and then he'll drive down home down to Hollister or Salinas where he lives, and he'll text on the way. He goes, uh, Do you want me to stop by? Because he has his car full of fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we got, a, we got a little theme playing here. Okay. But I thank you all for joining us tonight. It's been kind of a happy talk about porn and fireworks night how do those two things go together i don't know it legs. seems like you have fireworks go off but towards the end of the porn no uh, that's not the way it works anyway he's trying <laughs> el jefe <laughs> el jefe what are you doing trying to top charlie in 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 uh, el jefe i never get credit for the t-shirts i wear el jefe el jefe yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and also thank you to uh, uh, um, oh boy, my mind is just gone tonight, just terrible. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for being here tonight, and uh, thank you uh, to our good friend, uh, the lovely and attractive Charlie Wallace, or as he's known, Charlie Four Toes. You know, mm -hmm. is it Five Toes? Four. Four Toes. Charlie Four. Check his Facebook. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. It's on my Facebook. Well, I don't want to look. Anyway. <laughs> I'll take a picture of my ankle then. <laughs> thank you, Alan. And Kevin, thank you as well. Uh, and uh, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Jack Bishop will be doing a citizen panel next. He'll be doing it on Skype. And the number to call there is GabNet Live. GabNet Live. Meanwhile, we'll see you again tomorrow. 
you know? We always say same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.